Hey there guys, it's Liz here, your integrative health practitioner, and today's topic is going to be plant-based burgers. And we're going to be reviewing two very commonly consumed brands, so the Impossible Whopper from Burger King and Beyond Meat, their burger. We are going to be going over those. We're going to be using these reviews, these products as examples of what I want you guys to look out for in the ingredients and even in the practices of any of the other brands of meat substitutes out there because a lot of them we just don't realize how potentially toxic they can be so by the end of this video you are going to be able to not only have my thoughts on both of these specific brands but also be able to carry over those same factors those same principles and be able to audit any of your meat substitute products so that you really know what's in them now quick side note here, I know there's typically two main reasons that someone is going to consume a plant-based burger like the Impossible Whopper. Number one, it may be that's just their lifestyle choice. They are vegan, vegetarian, they don't want to consume animal products and I absolutely respect that. So that's number one. Or you have the other primary reason and that's that somebody thinks it's healthier just because it's labeled as plant-based. Some people may say, hey, I can go to Burger King and get a plant-based Whopper. That's gotta be so much healthier than the regular Whopper. And as you'll see throughout this video, that's not the case. Just because something is labeled as plant-based doesn't mean it is healthier. Just because something is labeled as gluten-free or sugar-free or dairy-free doesn't mean it's healthier. So the same thing applies here. Let's start with the Impossible Whopper. Now it has 21 ingredients, so I'm not gonna go through every single one and say this is what I think about this one and that one. I do want you to understand though that there are GMO ingredients in there. You have very high uh, inflammatory oils included in this product. And the main thing that I wanna draw to your attention is the fact that it has soy in it. But what is the big deal with soy? We have to stop here for a second and address this because I know there's two sides to the, the soy debate, right? You do have studies that show that soy can be beneficial. It can actually reduce your risk for certain cancers. It can help to uh, promote hormonal balance in certain people. And then you have the other side of the soy equation where we know that it could cause certain cancers, that we could, it can lead to hormonal imbalances and fertility issues. It can increase someone's risk for PCOS. It could contain very high amounts of phytoestrogens that are causing a lot of these potential health issues. I needed to bring this to your attention because it's not just enough for me to say, hey, soy is in this burger, so that's a bad thing. Because there could be some of you guys out there that say, well, I know people in you know Japan and whatnot consume soy on a pretty regular basis and they have great health. They have very long lifespans. So it seems like the information is contradicting, right? And you're right, you're absolutely right. So if someone says, is soy healthy? It's not necessarily a hard yes or hard no. It depends on the type of soy and that person's bioindividuality. So the type of soy, good quality soy, non-GMO, organic sprouted tofu is different than the you know soy protein concentrate or soy protein isolate that's found in the Impossible Whopper. It's totally different. You got GMO in the Impossible Whopper. You have good natural or organic sprouted tofu on the other side of things. They are not the same. Not all soy is created equal. And so not only does the type of soy make a difference, but like I said, the bioindividuality of a person makes a difference. So, you know, depending on your genetics, your current level of toxicity, how your hormones already exist, may determine whether I would recommend to a client to even incorporate soy within their program. The only time that honestly I would really recommend, potentially recommend that someone consume soy is if it is a female that is perimenopause, so they're in the middle of menopause or they're postmenopausal, and we can see through lab work that we've ran that there's a drastic decrease in their estrogen, which is clearly common in menopausal women. And if we're looking for a natural way to boost their estrogen, we may take a healthy form of soy to help do that. But that's not necessarily always the case. I believe that that absolutely should be, uh, you know, overseen by a health practitioner that knows what they're doing. But in majority of cases, I'm not going to tell somebody to incorporate soy. It's just you know, as of 2010, 93% of soy in the US was genetically modified. 
it is what it is. And so even if it's not genetically modified, if you're already having high estrogen levels, if you're a female that knows that you're estrogen dominant, which many people are, why, why have it? Why bother? And for males, I don't deem it to be necessary. I don't deem it to be beneficial. So it can vary for on a person to person basis. So again, this is not all etched in stone, black and white for every single person, but there are certain principles like don't eat GMO soy that I'm going to tell anybody. The, the benefit of soy from an impossible Whopper is non-existent. That is my opinion. <laughs> Okay, so I wanted to kind of cover that because it's very important when you're looking at any plant-based product, even plant-based proteins, I would say to somebody, hey, do a hemp seed protein, good quality hemp seed protein, potentially rice or pea protein versus doing a soy protein, all right? We'll get into that in a second when we go over the uh, Beyond Meat Burger. So all in all, Impossible Whopper, I don't think it's something that anybody should be consuming, but if you decide that it's something worth it for you, it's your non-negotiable indulgence that you want to have every so often, that's absolutely your call and your complete right to do so. Now let's go into the Beyond Meat Burger. Beyond Meat Burger is better, in my opinion, than the Impossible Whopper as far as quality, okay? So first of all, the Beyond Meat Burger is labeled as non-GMO by the, you know, the non-GMO project, okay? So it has that seal on there. So it is certified non-GMO. That doesn't necessarily mean all the ingredients are good and we'll talk about that at the end when we bring this to a close, but it is non-GMO, so that's a good sign. The only thing that you wanna keep in mind here is that you still do have some inflammatory oils. You have canola oil in there. It's high in omega-6s. We know it's gonna cause more inflammation. And you also have types of proteins plant-based proteins that aren't soy, but the pea and the rice protein is higher in lectins, okay? So you have the risk of having more gut issues, having more inflammation. Um, this is something that you wanna keep in mind. I actually have an entire free guide that gives you a quick cheat sheet of high lectin and, and a high histamine food sources because they can cause more inflammation in people, especially people with allergies when it comes to histamines. And if people have gut issues, you have bloating, acid reflux, indigestion, any of that stuff, consuming foods that are higher in lectins are gonna be harder for your body to digest, cause more gut permeability. So those types of proteins may not be working out too well for you. I've had a lot of clients that have said to me before that whenever they have had, you know, maybe it's the Vega protein that has different rice or pea proteins or whatnot in it, it just doesn't sit well with them. And again, it can depend on your bioindividuality and how the quality of your gut is already, okay? So keep that in mind. It may be a little harsh for some people to be able to digest, but it is a better alternative than the Impossible Whopper. That's my feedback there. Now let's bring it to a close when it comes to the thing that isn't listed on the label. So many of you guys have probably heard of Roundup by now, glyphosate. Um, you know, you see a lot of different commercials out there with law firms saying that they are taking on cases of people that have been exposed to Roundup and then they have lymphoma, all these different types of cancers, neurological issues, right? This has already been proven. Glyphosate, Roundup, it's already been proven to alter gene function, okay? You can have 0.1 parts per billion and it is proven to affect the gene function of kidneys, liver, other organs within the body. So does Beyond Meat have glyphosate? Does the Impossible Whopper have glyphosate? Yeah, both of them do. They have both been tested by third-party labs because the company's not gonna run this. They don't wanna advertise they have glyphosate. <laughs> They're not gonna tell you that. Same way that, you know, General Mills cereals and like, you know, your, you know, your Cheerios and all that stuff. They're not telling you how much glyphosate is in there. You know, you got third-party testing being done by companies such as Moms Across America. They tested both of these products and they found that Beyond Meat Burger, it had one part per billion. So the point one is what's going to affect gene function and Beyond Meat was tested to have one. So it has about 10 times as much on average. The Impossible Whopper had 11 parts per billion, which is what, like 100, 1,000, a million, whatever times. It's a crap ton more. I should have looked at that. <laughs> I'm so bad at the freaking mental math, but point one is where it affects, affects gene function. 11 is what the Impossible Whopper has. You don't have to be a mathematician to be able to say, clearly that's a hell of a lot higher 
then what we know is even going to affect your genes in your body. So you know that even if you're having non-GMO with Beyond Meat Burger, you're getting glyphosate, you're getting Roundup there, and you're definitely getting a crap ton of it within the Impossible Whopper. So what do I think as I bring this to a close? When it comes to plant-based burgers, are there potentially healthy alternatives? Um, yeah, there are. I'm not reviewing every single product here, but I am pointing out some of the main things you want to look for. You'll want to look for the quality of the proteins that are in there. If it has soy in it, I'm thinking it's not a good idea. When it comes to the pea, rice protein, and other plant-based proteins, keep in mind it could be more abrasive to your gut. I would try and stick with a hemp if you're going to do that for any type of plant-based protein. Look for the inflammatory oils. Look for canola oil. Look for sunflower oil. Look for safflower oil. Okay, you would love to have something that's at least labeled as non-GMO, but if you can get something that's organic, that is fantastic. If you can make your own at home, I know a lot of people like to do that, that's a potentially better alternative. You know, maybe you get non-GMO, sprouted, organic tofu, and you make your own plant-based burger, and you know what, then you know what's in it. And I'd say that that's the best route to go down, but as far as a lot of these other pre-made, packaged, processed burgers there, you're gonna end up giving it up some way or another. And if it's not labeled as organic, you better bet there's gonna be glyphosate, some other type of herbicide, pesticide within there. And that doesn't have to be listed on the label. So you really run that risk. If you choose to have it every so often, go ahead, that's absolutely your call. But like I say to any client, because I always try and be very straightforward, you know, do we wanna enjoy our life? Yes, but if you're at that point that, you know, you're having the brain fog, you're having gut issues, you are uh, not losing the weight like you want to, you're having fertility issues, you're having any health complications, but yet we want to stick our head in the sand and say, oh, well, you know, it doesn't really apply when I want to indulge in a Whopper once a week or, you know, two, every two weeks, every three weeks, every month. Inflammation still exists in the body. And if your body's already that compromised that you're experiencing symptoms, do we really want to consume something else? Is it worth it to consume something else that we know is going to exacerbate the issue? And depending on your genetic susceptibility and your current toxic load, it could be just one exposure that you have a six month inflammatory response that absolutely is possible. Very, very possible. You can have one exposure to an inflammatory ingredient and your body can have a six month inflammatory cascade that it's trying to catch up with afterwards. So if you guys have any questions, as always, post it in the comments. Let me know what your brand is. If you want me to give you my thoughts and review that specific one, I'm always more than happy to, but I hope this helped you to make, be able to make smarter plant-based food burger decisions overall.